Hello, this is the next lecture of uh, uh, English Grammar, fourth year students, uh, Department of English, College of Education. Now, uh, this lecture talks about concurred, or the agreement between the verb and the subject, or the subject and the uh, complement, or the subject and uh, the object. Now, concurred in general, the agreement between two things. Now, starting with the subject <coughs> and the verb, uh, this means that if the subject represents a plural noun, then the verb must take the uh, uh, form uh, of plural. If the subject represents or refers to uh, a singular noun then the verb must have them. Uh, the issue is that the verb <coughs> is uh, uh, what judges the verb is what judges whether the the subject uh, uh, is plural or noun however uh, because we start with the with the subject in the English sentence, then the subject seems to judge uh, or uh, to select the verb. Now, what about if the subject is a clause or sentence? If the subject is a sentence, then uh, uh, or prepositional phrase, then the verb is going to be singular in all the cases. Whenever we have the subject as a preposition phrase, prepositional phrase, or or a clause, which means a sentence or simple sentence, then the subject, the, the verb is gonna is gonna be uh, a singular. <clears throat> now let's see these two examples. One, how they got there does not concern me. So here, how they got there. This is a clause which in position which fills the position of the subject so as we said if we have a clause then it must take the verb singular or singular verb here does not concern me this is the object now uh, <clears throat> example number two after the exam is the time to relax now, after the exam is a prepositional phrase. After preposition, the exam is the exam, uh, the prepositional, <coughs> the noun phrase after the preposition after. So, after the exam is a prepositional phrase, and this must be dealt with uh, as uh, singular. Even if we say after the exams, here the uh, uh, verb must also be uh, singular why because the subject is the whole prepositional phrase the subject is the whole prepositional phrase and this prepositional phrase is dealt with as one entity which is singular which needs a singular verb now if the subject is a nominal relative clause then the verb may be either singular or plural how it depends on the reference of the nominal clause it depends on the reference of the nominal clause sometimes <coughs> we refer to a nominal clause as a plural noun so it takes the the the, the plural form of the verb sometimes we refer to uh, the uh, nominal clause as a singular then it must take a singular ver a singular form of the verb so let's see this example what was once human dwellings what was once human dwellings are now nothing you see so here it depends on the uh, uh, reference which is human dwellings uh, dwellings which is the plural then uh, 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 it uh, takes the verb 
form, uh, the form of the plural verb, which is are. There are nouns which end with s, s, but treated as singular, and there are nouns which do not end with s, but but treated as plural, as we have dealt with them in the mor morphology in the uh, morphology of English. Uh, so uh, certain nouns ending with s, but they do not represent plural, and the vice versa. Certain nouns do not end with s, <coughs> but they represent plural. Now, if we take this example, number one, measles, measles ends with s, s. It seems that it ends with s of plural, but in fact it is a disease. Measles is sometimes serious, and that's why it takes the uh, uh, singular form of the verb. And people which represents a group of uh, 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 persons, a group of individuals. <clears throat> uh, it does not end with S, but it represents a plural. It represents a plural, although there are sometimes uh, dispute whether regarding pu uh, people as one person or more. So here, it represents a group of, pe a group of persons, uh, so people are that's why it takes the form uh, uh, of the verb of the plural verb are complaining now uh, take a note here names titles and quotations are all treated as singular names titles and quotations when we quote somebody uh, when we quote from somebody or somebody's uh, uh, talk then this quote as one entity must be dealt with as uh, a singular uh, for example uh, hard times which is a name for a novel by uh, charles dickens so hard times here is a name is a name for, for a novel it is <coughs> plural yes but when we deal with it as a reference to the novel, then it, it represents a novel. So it represents one entity. So it must take the singular form of the verb. So Hard Times is a very popular novel. There is other type of the Concord, which is notional Concord. Sometimes we cannot judge whether the 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 uh, uh, the subject is singular or plural in certain cases we cannot judge we cannot uh, 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 recognize whether the uh, subject is a singular or plural why because it conveys both a singular noun and a plural noun now what to do here we depend on the notion the notion and here it is called the notional uh, conquered now the agreement of the verb is with the, with the subject according to the idea of the number of the subject rather than the actual presence for example we say the government the government this government belongs to what is called collective nouns collective nouns collective nouns uh, are the nouns which represent a unit or members of a unit a unit one entity or members of a unit when it represents a unit then it is dealt with as inanimate which means we refer to it by uh, it and which when it is a, a, a group of members of individuals then it is uh, 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 people and we refer to them by who now here the, in, the, in, in the, this example we can either say the government have broken their promises have broken their promises why because their promises the promises cannot uh, 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 taken uh, uh, but by the, the group of people and and the notion is the government is uh, uh, a plural noun 
we can also say the government has not done their job uh, uh, its job has not done the uh, its job why because the government can be dealt with as uh, a singular noun as well now this is what is meant by the notional uh, concord so here it, the concord or the agreement depends on the notion the idea which we have or which the speaker or the writer has in mind uh, <clears throat> or sometimes it is an agreement of the verb with whatever noun or pronoun closely precedes it sometimes sometimes it depends on the noun which precedes the verb whatever we say for example this this one we can say one in ten takes a drug why because the subject is one while other people say one in ten this phrase is uh, 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 the subject so ten is a plural that's why it uh, uh, takes uh, this verb which is take the plural vo form of the verb take why because they follow this one the, 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 the noun which precedes the verb sometimes we say Ahmed and I go sometimes you say Ali and she goes why because she takes goes Forget, for, forgetting about the Ahmed and she both are a uh, 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 plural noun and this is called as well one of the types of notional concord collective nouns as we just said collective nouns uh, we use plural verbs with collective nouns depending on the idea we just explain this again, again the notional uh, concord so the notional the notional concord deals with the collective nouns the public is tired of the of the demonstration the public here this is collective noun we can say the public are tired so both are correct the public is tired of the demonstration and the public are tired of uh, demonstration both are correct why because in, uh, the the subject here the public represents the collective nouns sometimes we use a singular verb if we regard them so it, 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 the, the whole matter depends on you whether you intend to say the singular verb the singular uh, noun or you intend to say the plural noun of these collective uh, nouns now coordinated subjects sometimes we have two or three or more subjects which are coordinated by one of the coordinators now what how can we get the agreement or the concord regarding them for example, we have to distinguish between two things, non-oppositional coordination, non-oppositional coordination, and oppositional coordination. Non-oppositional coordination, the phrase, uh, uh, it means the phrase is a reduction of two clauses. Therefore, it requires plural form, uh, form of the verb. Why? Because two clauses are uh, 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 combined together. For example, Tom and Mary are ready. Here, this Tom and Mary, these two obje uh, subjects represent two clauses, two simple sentences, which means Tom is ready and Mary is ready. Combining them all together give us two sentences. We uh, 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 collect the ver uh, combine the verb, the, the two verbs, to become are, which is the form of plural, so Tom and Mary are ready. If the two things refer to one entity, a singular verb is used. Two things refer to one entity. For example, the hammer and sickle was flying the flag. So the hammer and sickle, the hammer and sickle, they both refer to one entity. They both refer to one entity. They are not two entities. They refer to one entity, and that's why we uh, use uh, 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 was, because they are representing one entity. This is number one, uh, uh, which is non-oppositional uh, uh, coordination. Opposition here means in Arabic, badal. 
in Arabic it means badal. So when we have the non-oppositional uh, coordinated subjects, then of course uh, if we do not have badal, so there there are two entities. If the two uh, subjects represent one entity, then it takes one. Uh, it takes the uh, singular verb uh, form of the verb. Now to the oppositional coordination, which is of course the uh, what we call badal in Arabic. Uh, it means there is no reduction of possible uh, po possible, and we use a singular verb. Why? Because it is it is a representation to one entity. It refers to one entity, whatever the uh, oppositions that we have for example we say uh, we say al uh, we say ahmed al mudir al shab huwa talib so this is ahmed al mudir al shab all these three subjects are called oppositions to the one entity who's ahmed now here of course we use the uh, ver the singular verb for example this temple of ugliness and memorial to Victorian bad taste. You see these? This temple of ugliness and memorial to Victorian bad taste. All these are oppositions to this temple. And that's why we use the singular form was uh, erratic and so on. Now note if we have a coordinate uh, if we have coordinated modifiers with one uh, simple noun we use a plural uh, verb. For example, good and bad taste. Good and bad taste. Two modifiers, coordinated modifiers. Of course, this means this means that they they have uh, they have uh, a reduction of two of two phrases. Let's say two phrases, which is, which are good taste and bad taste. And here the subject uh, the, the verb must be in. Uh, uh, a plural form uh, of the verb. Principle of proximity. Sometimes when we have uh, either or, now what to do with these? Either this or that, which means one of them. We use the principle of proximity. What does it mean, principle of, of proximity? <clears throat> it means we follow the uh, 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 the form of the verb according to the noun which precedes which rightly precedes the verb which precedes the the verb which is nearest to the verb for for example either your eyesight of breaks are at fault you see this is the breaks which is a plural and that's why we put the verb R plural. Why? Because it is approximate, near to it, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the verb. So, uh, since it is uh, uh, plural, then we put the verb, uh, the plural form of the verb. Neither he nor his wife has arrived. Why? Because, why has? Because his wife is one entity singular noun and that's why we put the singular verb which is has arrived now we use the principle of proximity with more than as well more than we use the verb for example more than a thousand inhabitants have signed more than a thousand inhabitants uh, 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 have signed so why do we use have here because of the inhabitants inhabitants or we can say more than one person has protested which means when wh why why do we use has here because of the noun person which is singular so otherwise it means more more than one person it means a lot of persons and so on and so forth <clears throat> indefinite expressions of amount now when we have none and neither to come alone we can use both singular and plural verbs but if we use none of them or neither of them a plural 
verb is favored. It is not fixed, but it is favored. For example, I sent Mary and John a card, but none or neither have or has. Sorry, this is this should be uh, should be uh, has. So uh, have or oops has. So neither have or neither has. Neither have or neither has replied. Neither have or neither has replied. Two. I sent Mary and John a card, but none or neither of them have replied. There is no room for has. Why? Because we have none of them or neither of them have replied. Indefinite expressions of amount. Now, when we say everybody, everyone, nobody, all these put, uh, take uh, 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 require a singular verb. All these require a singular verb although although some american english uh, speakers put uh, 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 the 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 uh, the plural form of the verb while we are after the uh, 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 bbc english which means we follow quirk uh, ital so <clears throat> we use the plural form uh, following proximity uh, rules nobody answers correctly nobody answers correctly so here the uh, uh, the the singular verb of the form uh, singular form of the verb sorry nobody even the teacher was listening e nobody even the teacher was listening so the same rule is applied to a large number of that kind sort type of we say a large number of people were a large number of people you see this were proximity those kind or sort or type of parties kind sort or type of parties are favored now so type of parties you see the proximity here are favored now now conquer the person this is another type of conquer, <clears throat> which is conquered of person. Now, either or and neither nor is followed by a singular or plural verb depending on the last phrase as per the proximity rule. For example, neither you nor I nor anyone else knows. Why? Because the anyone else is the nearest or the approximate the most approximate to the verb and we follow this one okay so we do not follow you we do not follow I we follow only this one okay either my wife or I am going we, we do not say either my wife or I are going no we say either my wife and I am going now, subject complement conquered. This is the uh, 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 third type of conquered. If the subject is singular, of course, and the complement is a noun, of course, the complement has to be singular. For example, he is an angel. We do not say he is angels. Why? Because there must be an agreement or a, a, a conquered between the complement noun with the subject they are angels there are e exceptions in this uh, to this rules to this rule sorry there are exception exceptions to this rule uh, one what we need more is books what we need more is books and they turn traitor but they become traitors they turned traitor they turn traitor which means but they become traitors or good manners are a rarity these days good manners are a rarity these days which means which means it is rare to have good uh, uh, manners 
now these are uh, uh, one, uh, some of the sentences which belong to the block language they are uh, irregular though the same applies to the object object complement of course he thinks these girls the best actors so these girls the object the best actors must be in, in, in concord with the object the, so the object complement must agree with the object so these girls the best actors or we can say he thinks this girl the best actor why because uh, of the concord so so we have to uh, uh, have concord or agreement between the subject uh, the, the object and its complement and the subject and its complement altogether there is yet another type of the concord which is subject object subject ob object concord now in this type of uh, concord the agreement must be between the subject and the object when we say between the subject and the object when we say he injured himself in the leg so the the uh, uh, agreement between he and himself we, we, we cannot say he injured uh, herself or themselves no we say uh, there must be a ca kind of concord he in injured himself in the leg or she is making a sweater for herself we cannot say for her, uh, themselves or for hi himself why because there must be a kind of agreement between the subject and the object or the reflect reflexive uh, pronouns pronoun concord there is the concord between a pronoun and its antecedents the pronoun and its antecedents which is similar to the subject object uh, uh, concord how for example john hurts his foot we cannot say his feet why because uh, sorry we cannot say her feet uh, her foot why because there must be a concord between he which is john and uh, his which is uh, uh, john's uh, referent so we use plural pronouns for everybody nobody everyone and no one why because we do not know the sex of the antecedents for example everybody thinks they have the answer everybody thinks they have the answer has anybody brought their cameras no one could have blamed themselves why because why 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 using here uh, they their cameras were themselves because we do not know the sex of uh, 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 these indefinite pro uh, uh, pronouns we cannot know the uh, uh, indefinite uh, the uh, referent of these indefinite pronouns <clears throat> the same applies to either or either he or his wife he or his wife he and she is uh, bringing the stuff so why using there because we have he and his wife which re refers to she so we cannot uh, 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 specify informal English use they use he or his she or her instead of they their themselves they use he his so this is in informal English only every student has to make up his or her mind they write like this his or her mind every student everyone has to make up his or her they write like this while the formal English they say every student has to make up their mind you see that's all for this lecture next time we'll continue with uh, the next uh, with the next lecture i do uh, appreciate you if you uh, 
uh, find out the exercises regarding this topic in the workbook and try to uh, uh, practice, practice, practice a lot uh, because grammar uh, can only be uh, learned through practice. That's all for me. Thank you very much.